Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name's Patrick Ferry, and I'll be flying solo today. But welcome to our show. All right, guys, so to start off season three, episode four of Young Americans Abroad, just want to first mention that, again, I will be flying solo as my colleague here, Austin, uh, has some work conflicts coming up. But again, we're always providing you content on Instagram, Twitter, keeping you up to date with the latest transfers and exciting news going on as uh, all the leagues have officially kicked off and the transfer deadlines are ending uh, around the world. So exciting content to provide for you guys. But for this week's episode, we have an exciting player that made a pretty good impact in his Premier League game in his first full 90 minutes, along with another exciting dynamic striker in the Bundesliga, providing an amazing goal, which we'll elaborate on this episode. And last but not least, a surprise transfer uh, for one of our forwards to uh, a Serie B team. So all that and more in this week's episode. All right, guys, so to begin our episode, we're going to start with a Chelsea FC player, none other than Christian Pulisic. Uh, so we're going to highlight some about this 2-2 uh, draw, uh, you could say unfortunate draw with Sheffield United and how he performed uh, for the first full 90 minutes uh, in the Premier League, where the case was for the past few games. He was playing, you know, up until that point, but was getting subbed off or uh, subbing on. So it's nice to see him um, and Lampard put him in for the full 90, especially as the season hasn't been uh, the best for Chelsea, uh, obviously with the transfer bans and some of the, the youth coming in and kind of taking over and Hazard leaving uh, to highlight things. It's definitely been a time of transition for Chelsea, uh, who was once a pr multiple times uh, Premier League winners and Champions League um, you know, com competitors. So again, uh, just to highlight Pulisic's uh, performance there, on the 19th minute it was really when he first got involved. So they kind of locked him down on uh, the right side of the flank there, and a lot of the attack went through the left if you noticed early in the game. And again, in that 19th minute, uh, that chance led to ultimately led to a goal where uh, the ball went forward. He made a darting run and passed it to Espelicueta, who crossed it to uh, Tammy Abraham, who's actually been in pretty good form. I think it might be four goals in the last two games. Um, he, had a, he had a brace here. But nonetheless, uh, Abraham headed, headed it towards goal and Pulisic charged forward and pretty much put off the keeper as they – both went for it, and Abraham was able to, able to slot it into the back. Excuse me, uh, to put you know give Chelsea that goal. So again, a pretty good start for uh, Chelsea. And at the end of the half, he started to get more involved through a few uh, free kicks and fouls. Again, uh, players were bodying him off, which a lot of people have been saying is a little bit a cause for concern. However, his speed and dynamism um, throughout the entire game was. Very exceptional to watch, except especially in the first half. But second half, things kind of fell apart, and Sheffield United made some really good tactical adjustments and just moved things around where Chelsea and Lampard didn't really adapt, which has been a significant problem for them early on in the season. So the second half, uh, Sheffield kind of stacked a lot of flank players wide, and they had more players wide, and Pulisic ultimately struggled to make an impact there. And I think they made some subs, Chelsea, and pool six switch to the left there. Uh, I can't recall exactly who kind of came in and out there. But, again, just trying to conjure up some more chances. And, unfortunately, they they blew the lead and ended up with a 2-2 draw. I think putting them back maybe in 11th place, somewhere around there. So, uh, again, not not the best start. And, again, it's only four games for Pulisic, but uh, one assist in those four games. And this one almost counted as an assist, but you, you can't technically count it. And as a whole, I think sums up Chelsea so far. They're young and industrious. You can see all the effort along Pulisic along with his teammates uh, just trying to find the game of themselves. But, again, this is uh, a behemoth of a league. And, uh, you have to capitalize on your chances and be efficient. And I think that's the key uh, for Pulisic and some of these other players is just 
being efficient and finishing those chances in the final third and being very clinical because right now I think Lampard and Chelsea are a little worried with a uh, one win, two draws and a loss. So it definitely kind of sets them back, especially with leaders like Man City and Liverpool uh, dominating already. And even Arsenal uh, stepping up their game while Tottenham struggled. But again, that race for the top four, even the top six is just um, very unreal. So Chelsea is going to have a, I think honestly, a little tougher season than uh, than past seasons, of course. But again, I still believe Pulisic just needs to you know, put his head down, keep working, uh, keep improving on the little things and training, and ultimately you'll see it. But again, this league, like we've come to know, really expects within the first few games, not to say that all fans are turning, but uh, there are some critics, especially with the limelight, so uh, heavily on an American player. Uh, with this high transfer value. So Chelsea fans, along with U.S. fans, are expecting results. And I think uh, Pulisic just kind of got to mentally focus by his time there and the goals and assists will come. Uh, I definitely believe that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll kind of keep out, uh, keep watching for Pulisic. We have some friendlies coming up here, which is exciting. And hopefully he can kind of uh, get back with his U.S. national team players uh, relax a little bit, train with them, get some good chemistry going, and come back from this international break fully uh, ready to go uh, as it heats up in the Premier League. So moving on to uh, a player in the Bundesliga, an exciting striker, and that is none other than Josh Sargent. And uh, Josh was a key uh, contributor with a beautiful goal and a 3-2 win against Augsburg for uh, Werder Bremen. So again, Werder, I think that might have been uh, one of their first few wins there, just to put him up to the table. And he played 82 minutes, Sargent. And also, it was his second ever Bundesliga start. So uh, that's pretty impressive, guys, just because I know with the turmoil we've talked about on this show, and I'm sure you've heard it being left off the Gold Cup roster previously, uh, not necessarily being that first choice striker with, uh, I think it's Egestein and uh, one of the other players, uh, Rashika, if I'm saying that correctly, who's currently injured now, and um, having kind of those strikers around and uh, attackers, you could say, uh, has kind of kept Sargent on the bench, kind of biding his time waiting. He's definitely proven to be a first-team player, and uh, this game certainly was uh, crucial because he had this beautifully uh, played ball. I think it was right in the first half, uh, and he you know, trapped it, was kind of juggling it almost. Uh, it was kind of nicely taken down and the goalie came out and he just chipped it over the keeper. It was, it was, it was beautiful and, you know, slotted it in. So again, I would definitely check out the highlights there, that game, uh, especially the first half because Sargent provided a, a beautiful goal all in all. And again, ended up being crucial because they won three to two, but just want to also highlight, he played more centrally in this game in a two forward system. Uh, which is kind of different than what uh, Florian Kohlfeldt and Werder Brown have played, uh, you know, recently and in the past. I think we've seen some uh, formations where it's a three-four-two-one and a four-three-three, or sometimes uh, Sargent slotted on the flank there, and um, they have Rashika or the other strikers kind of come in and you know focus on that central point. So it was kind of nice to see Sargent played more centrally, and maybe that will give Florian more thought and. Because, again, he had a pretty solid performance. The second half, he did tire out and die out a little bit. But all in all, this was definitely a game for him to step up in. And, yeah, like I mentioned before, maybe this will give uh, the coach and Werder second thoughts and help him kind of get some more, more playing time and more starts. Because, again, Sargent is such a crucial piece of the future, I believe, especially with such a you know, lack of depth in the striker position. And we definitely need uh, this young, promising striker to uh, step up to the plate, which I know he can. So uh, again, guys, just kind of keep a, a lookout on Josh and Werder and uh, tune into some of those games because I uh, that was one of the first ones that I was able to catch. Um, and it was definitely a game uh, worth watching. So moving on to a player that was... Uh, you know, killing it in the Air Divisi and the the Ersta Divisi in the second division there, uh, but a player at Reading FC just officially uh, made a transfer, and that is Andrea uh, Novakovic, one of our uh, fan favorites here, and so he actually uh, just transferred to a Serie B team, and hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, 
uh, this Frosinone, uh, Frosinone, and yeah, so that team actually was in Serie A, and they just got relegated down, uh, dropped down. So again, they're in Serie B. This is the second tier in uh, Italy, and Reading actually, you know, they worked out a deal for uh, four years, uh, the contract to uh, uh, ship them over there. So all in all, I think. It's kind of hard to say just because it, he really wasn't getting the chances at Reading. I think he only had three first team appearances, if I'm correct. And it might have been, uh, you know, on Twitter, I think it might have been uh, one of the US uh, uh, commentators, kind of Daniel, who provides some really good content insight on players. He mentioned that it might, uh, Andrea might have only played like 15 or 18 minutes altogether for the first team. And again, like we've covered on the show. He's gone out to loan and uh, the Netherlands has performed pretty well most recently uh, with Fortuna Sitard. So again, th this is just an interesting move. I think we're all disappointed that he couldn't make it or, or break it at Reading, I guess, uh, just because the championship seemed just like a, a good next step up the ladder. Um, yeah, especially just for his club and uh, you know, country career. I wasn't expecting him to be, you know, climbing the ladder as fast as you could say uh, McKinney Pulisic, obviously different positions, but in that career trajectory, but he definitely seemed like he was on his way up uh, to stay at Reading. And uh, again, hopefully this move to a Serie B team will really improve his chances and he can get back in form and maybe help them get back up to Serie A. Uh, yeah. Cause he's still 22 um, relatively young striker and we've seen some good, good quality out of him. So I think, uh, Prosasone is definitely looking for, you know, some strikers to come in that just started the season a few games in, and he can integrate into the team and look to provide some great quality chances. So, again, we're we're rooting for you, Andrea, and hopefully you can kick off this uh, season in Italy, uh, you know, very strongly here. So we are uh, going to head uh, over back to Germany, uh, where Weston McKenney uh, started uh, for Schalke's 3 0 win against Hertha Berlin. So, this was a really crucial game uh, after that kind of slightly disappointing, I think, 3 0 loss to Bayern uh, most recently for Schalke. And McKinney overall was fantastic defensively, like we've come to know, especially now that he's kind of found his role uh, in the midfield, not being used as a utility player per se, playing left back, outside back, forward, whatever. Um, so <laughs> it's definitely exciting to see him kind of in that six or eight role um, where he, we definitely think he will thrive. And he also had some strong runs going forward. So some good bursts of energy where he'd link up with the attack and provide some chances, which is uh, really exciting to see. And I think my uh, colleague wanted to point out too, um, Austin, which I, we all know, uh, I wish he were here. Um, this was uh, McKinney's 50th uh, Bundesliga appearance. Um, so that's, you know, amazing. That's a huge milestone, especially for uh, such a highly talented American player. He's had a nice trajectory and career path so far, rising from the academy and inserting himself as a dominant first team player. And it really seems like this year is really, really exciting, and crucial for him, not only for Schalke, but for the U.S. national team. I want to read kind of a quote or just a little uh, excerpt I took from an interview with David Wagner. He had some really high praise uh, for Weston. And he mentioned that um, he could be, you know, the best, uh, one of the best players at Schalke for this club and even in the Bundesliga in his specific position and role. Um, again, he has a number six or eight uh, mentality and he's not afraid to take the chances and just can kind of grind out and, uh, not afraid to get in, uh, stick in for tackles and uh, control the game that way. So uh, it definitely seems like, and Wesson's point out, he's not just a utility player this year. He really thinks he's found his identity in the role. And that's exactly what you want to see, especially for a player at his age, uh, very youthful, with, you know, rising value. And um, again, it just seems like this could be a really good season for him individually. I know Austin and I have talked about Schalke as a whole. We're unsure of where they might fall. Um, obviously, it's so early, and they're kind of sitting, I think, in the middle of the table, but you never know how things can go. Uh, they do have a good coach, like we mentioned, uh, Wagner, and it just seems like 
I don't want to say, you know, projecting into the future, but if McKinney keeps up this and identifies this role you know, really strongly with Schalke and isn't moved around all the time, I think he might be uh, getting some looks in the next year or two from some, uh, you know, really top four or five uh, Bundesliga teams or uh, teams in other leagues because he's a really dynamic player, as we've come to know, uh, whether it's in the midfield and, and playing those kind of – he can hit some of those diagonals, but just also those bursting runs forward to link up with the midfield and forwards. Uh, so, again, uh, just wanted to highlight that exciting – you know, we can recap for McKenney and Schalke and hopefully they keep uh, things rolling here. And we also want to uh, talk about a player that was with DC United and uh, made a, a loan move uh, to a Belgian team, uh, Sintruden, and that is Chris Durkin. So uh, Sintruden, again, I think like we've covered because we've had some players like EPB and Kortrick and uh, Horvath uh, with Club Bruges and whatnot. Uh, they're a team in the top flight and uh, a pretty pretty uh, solid team there. So uh, not a bad move. And just to recap the the loan move, it's a one-half a year loan, I believe, and there's a $2.25 million option to buy. So I found that kind of interesting because it seems like, and I think some from some interviews and research I was doing, uh, D.C., I think he had about six or seven starts so far this year, which isn't great. And then maybe I could be wrong, um, maybe 14 or 15 appearances. So again, he wasn't really cementing himself as that first team starter. Uh, he definitely had some impacts at the U20 World Cup. I think of four of the five uh, games or so, he was a pretty in uh, integral piece of the team. And yeah, just for DC United, it, he, he just wasn't locking down that spot. And it seems like this is kind of his almost last chance in a way. And to go to Europe and Belgium, which is pretty solid league. And you could almost make the case that um, this team is on par with some other MLS teams. I don't think it's by any means like a, a massive, you know, uh, upgrade, I guess. But I think Durkin is really hoping for some first team minutes and just testing himself in Europe. And Hey, who knows if he, can surprise us and you know make an impact and be a starter over there. Uh, maybe they buy him there or DC brings them back. So it doesn't seem like they want to completely get rid of him and out of the plans uh, for the MLS club, but also just kind of keeping him in the back there. Uh, maybe with like one eye opened, uh, something like that. So we'll kind of have to see how that goes and monitor that. Uh, yeah, just, it just seems like, uh, hopefully it's a good it needs to be a good fit for him and hopefully again he's able to insert himself into the team because if he's not playing over there then this whole situation could go very poorly for him uh, again very young player who was just involved uh, in that u20 world cup uh, really had some high praise and i think another point we wanted to bring out was he might have waited a little too long just because a few years ago he was even more touted i guess uh not sure the last uh, few years, what's kind of uh, gone on in terms of maybe just uh, the players ahead of him are just more advanced or the coach wasn't trusting him or it's the system and whatnot. Again, I'm no uh, DC United expert, but yeah, it just seems like Durkin had to, again, like I said, test new waters, try a, a different league in Europe and challenge himself, which is exciting to see. And we, we kind of hope uh, all the best for Durkin uh, going forward here. So yeah, guys, that's uh, all for this part of the episode, but let's head on over to my favorite part, Quick Kicks. So guys, this is obviously uh, one of my favorite times of the show, and I hope it's one of yours as well, uh, because we have some great content to provide, because it's none other than Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller, it's out to the over the wall! All right, guys, so we're going to head over to the Bundesliga, where American keeper Zach Steffen was in the Bundesliga team of the week with six saves. However, Dusseldorf unfortunately lost 2-1 to Frankfurt. Now heading over to the Netherlands, uh, Serginho Dest, exciting uh, right back of ours, started and played all 90 in Ajax's 2-0 win in the UCL qualifying group. Then the following weekend, he started and played 65 
minutes and Ajax's 4-1 win against uh, Sparta Rotterdam there in the Eredivisie. So congrats to Serginho and uh, looking for big things during this uh, international break with the U.S. Now heading over to Argentina, uh, Matko uh, Milhovic actually started and scored his first professional goal uh, for Argentina's uh, juniors in their 1-0 win. So uh, congrats to Matko there. Now, unfortunate news uh, for championship defender Matt Miazga. He has an injury. Uh, we're a little unsure. The injury is very unknown, and there's supposed to be a medical report coming out soon, so keep your eyes on that, and he will unfortunately be missing uh, the U.S. friendlies here. Now, heading back to Argentina, George Acosta actually made a move uh, from Boca Juniors to Austin Bold FC and actually picked up an assist in his first uh, pro minutes there over the weekend. So uh, congrats to uh, George there. Now, heading over to Sweden, uh, Romain Gall actually started and played 90 and had an assist in uh, Malmo's 1-0 uh, Europa League qualifier win. So uh, congrats to Romain and hopefully uh, keep seeing uh, more minutes and uh, more time on the field. Now, heading back to uh, or over to England, excuse me, uh, Matt Ulusunde actually started and uh, played 90, had an assist, and was man of the match in uh, Rotherham United's 1 1 draw against the Tranmere Rovers. Now, I just want to highlight some uh, two exciting uh, young Yaz here, and to start with uh, Ethan Bryant, who is an 18 year old midfielder who is moving from San Antonio FC over to the Belgian second division club, uh, KSV Roselar. So congrats to uh, Ethan there. And uh, last but not least, uh, Johan Gomez, the 18-year-old forward, is moving from the FC Dallas Academy to FC Porto, uh, which is an exciting uh, top club in uh, Portugal. So congrats to Johan and all the uh, young Yaz here. And as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And again, uh, here's my line here. Check out our awesome social media pages, our Instagram and Twitter. Again, like I mentioned, we're always putting out exciting content uh, up to date there with some of the transfers, uh, whether it's with the young Yaz or uh, you know players here that are involved with the uh, national team currently. Uh, really exciting stuff. Like I mentioned, the episode with Sargent scoring coming in a hot form. Uh, Pulse kind of getting his feet wet at Chelsea still. And just all this exciting news here to provide you guys because uh, one day, all of these uh, crucial young players and uh, obviously current players here that we have as well in the pool are going to help uh, with that one goal in mind, and that is to win the World Cup.